I'm pretty sure the, the Bernie made of scandal have, have, have had a huge effect in the private uh, wealth management uh, um, business. What should people look for? I mean, what should people be aware of? And uh, where is, I mean, to put their money in a safe place? The, the number one rule is if you don't understand it, don't do it. You know, if you don't understand it, if you can't see it, if you don't know what it is, if any, look at all this stuff, even in all these hearings, where all these institutions, and these are pretty sophisticated institutions, you know, a German bank, you know, a Swiss bank, all these people thinking that you could get free money. I have never met anybody who became rich doing something that was free money. They did something because they, they, they made money because they understood it. You know, they, they, they could granularly explain things. Uh, you, you need to have transparency. You need to ask a lot of questions. And I think that's one of the things where, whether you're doing it yourself or you're hiring somebody to do it, you've got to be able to, to go down. You've got to peel the onion through every layer. You've got to get transparency. And then you've got to understand it. And if you don't understand it, don't do it. It doesn't matter. Don't do it. What's amazing to me about the Bernie Madoff thing is how many people did not bother to ask the right questions. You know, they have found out that no transactions ever happened. And yet you had custodians who supposedly were holding securities that never existed. You had accountants, you know, uh, giving reports on financial statements on things that never existed. You had transactions supposedly happening that never happened. Okay, so if you don't understand it and you can't see it, don't do it. It's, it's better to have the money sitting in a treasury bill than it is to reach for stuff where it looks too good to be true. We always have a saying, if it looks too good to be true, it usually is. Can you explain like a symbol, like for dummies here? Uh, not <laughs> it's just for you, Nico. Not for me, exactly. I, I've heard this that, uh, that the, the banks have a conflict of interest when managing ARMA. Why, why is that? And why it doesn't happen in the permanent groups? Because I do think it has to do with this whole way of setting yourself up around who do you work for. How are you paid? If, if there was one bit of advice that I could give everybody, and it's just common sense, you know, understand whether what you're paying for and whether the people that are advising you are working for themselves or are they working for you. And so you need to ask the question about what is the business model? How does whoever it is that's advising me make money? The banks make money through manufacturing and distributing product. So if you walk into a Chevy, you know, showroom, are, are they going to suggest that the best car for you, you know, might be something that is manufactured by Ford? I don't think so, right? So you have to understand if, if, if you're buying from the manufacturer, they, they're going, you, you need to understand then whether that manufacturer is really what you want, but don't expect that they're going to be giving you what's right for the competition. Their business model is to manufacture and distribute product. Understand when they're suggesting somebody else's product, are you being paid to offer me that product? Is the manufacturer of that product paying you? And if that's the case, keep that in your head and figure out whether or not that really is the best for you. Because they're not going to show you something that they're not paid to show you. And I, I think that's why that's the key question. So, their business model, and they say, well, the, our advice is free. Yeah, the advice is free because they're manufacturers and distributors. Other people like us, we charge for the advice, but then we're not paid any, we don't have any product, and we're not paid by anybody to distribute. So the key to everything is what is the business model? How are you being paid? And then specifically, how is the person advising you paid? Are they paid because they get a commission depending on what they sell you? That, that's where you have the conflict. So I, I think that's where I hope that these hearings in Washington will help people ask the questions. What is the business model? How are they getting paid? And then be able to say, what does that mean for me? By the way, it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. But what you can't do is confuse that they're on your side.
why are there no women uh, running these, um, these Ponzi schemes? <laughs> Are women more innately honest than men? I can't say women are more honest than men. I think it's just human nature, whether you're honest or not. There, there's, there's one thing that I do believe that women do have, not over men, but they, they, they're just born with it. I think women are just very responsible as, as part of, of, of women's nature. I, do, I would have to just add that. Let's talk a little bit about uh, where you come from. You come from uh, Juarez, which today it's a... Uh, Way, yeah, for the wrong, for the wrong reasons, for the wrong reasons, but yeah, it's probably the most dangerous city in our hemisphere right now. Uh, there was like a massacre some time ago of women, and right now it's, everything is happening with the drug cartels and all of this. What, what can you tell us about the people from Juarez? Are there any, how can you describe, are there any characteristics that they have in common? Why, why is it happening like this, and why, why it has to be Juarez that is being for a, in, in a long process of violence and before it was killing of women, massive killing of women, and today it, 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 it transformed into the drug dealings and, and all of this. When they had all this um, uh, murders of women, I would have to say something. And Jorge will not um, let me lie here because this, this is something that was published only I think once or twice and then it never came out again. I don't know how you say feminicidios in English, but in Juarez, you know, the, the media was so present all the time. There were over 180 uh, private organizations created to receive money to help the women. Do you know how much of that money went to the families of the women that were being murdered? Probably 5%. The rest was being used personally by those organizations. In Jalisco, in that time frame, we live in, Jali in Guadalajara right now, there were more women killed than there were in Juarez. In the Estado de Mexico, there were more women killed than there were in Juarez. But in Juarez, for some reason, the media was there present all the time. Therefore, it just became the news. I'm not saying it's right. It's absolutely wrong, especially because it went without being punished. It went without really being um, investigated. There were bodies of women. Cause I, 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 I participated in a campaign. I actually started... Um, foundation with, with some business people in Juarez, not to solve what was happening with women because it was not our job, but to prevent. So we created a great campaign for women to prevent what was happening. So we went and spoke with, including FBI, Policia Federal, et cetera. And what, what we realized was that there were so many different aspects that everybody had in mind of what was going on. You know, they talked about drug cartels, they talked about snuff movies, they talked about people who were killing women to cover up because of what was happening, you know, their own little uh, private problems they were having. We really don't know what was happening, but it was, the media was just so present there that it became, again, you know, a worldwide known city for that reason. And what was so sad is what I'm telling you is that there were even bodies of women that had been just covered, not covered, they were just put in, uh, in the morgue without a name. Nobody even, at the, at the very beginning, and there were like probably 15 or 20 bodies like that, that nobody even cared to find. This was at the beginning. This was at the beginning of, of when, when the murders were coming out, that nobody even cared who they were, where they came from. You know, Juarez is a, a, a city of maquiladora, and, and uh, most of the people who come to Juarez to work come from the center of, of, the, of the country. And so they didn't care, and they left it in total and absolute uh, uninvestigation. And I think that was one of the, uh, of the most horrendous things that could ever happen to my city, is that nobody really cared what was happening to women. And of course, you know, the media was very present. 